Hello everyone, my name is Rumat and today we're going to watch over a replay from our friend of ours from our discord Ili and uh, we're going to analyze and commentate the replay and we're all going to learn from this because we're all going to do the same mistakes in some games and we're all here to actually improve at Talia so this is going to be a I don't know maybe coaching sort of session but I don't really have time to do this kind of things every day for everyone uh, I do have time if you want to upload videos to YouTube and I will tell you in text for free it's I'll just take time off and I will try to tell you what mistakes you did so if you upload somewhere on YouTube I will try to give you my advice on what I think you do wrong in general so this is an exception this is an interesting case uh, this is a game where I want to actually uh, talk a little about this replay uh, it's a fairly long game so uh, I'm going to probably skip over some parts some non-important parts and I'm going to edit I'm also uh, add some music probably anyway uh, regardless of Elo, Elo is not important here I will just talk in general about what players should be doing uh, please uh, don't take this uh, don't get offended by anything I say and it's okay I guess in general uh, mistakes do happen for everyone and I understand them completely now uh, we start the game off with an invade also we see the Talia is playing with ignite uh, flash and electrocute everything that is needed also she's against a hard matchup maybe the most difficult yeah so and that's also the most annoying probably besides maybe katarina or Zed. and she has armor rune that's good uh okay and now we move towards the invade it seems that both teams have invaded i'm also going to skip a little fast forward so that you can see the best things only now there is a fight going on i really want to see this okay this is my first watch Okay, okay, that was a, what are they doing? What? Okay, <laughs> okay, we got the first blood on the list. That's nice. Uh, that was some wrong map awareness from there, Elise. Uh, but probably here we can get. Oh, we could get the kill on Bard there. We got the kill on Bard. Now the mistake here was that uh, we could have got the kill, that kill faster. And I don't know what happens now, but the score is 3-2 for M. Basically, our other got fed, which is kind of eh, because laners will suffer now. And most people don't have summoner spells, which besides their Elise and Caitlyn, which is a good thing, and also their top laner. Uh, it's a good thing for Udir because he can get kills on that bar, for example, if he ganks. But if he doesn't gank, that's a bad thing. Now here we have some good farming, apparently... Uh, Okay, maybe here she'll... Okay, she, she missed only once, yes, that's good. And now our Talia goes bot to help uh, Odir in the one versus one. Now, what I don't understand is how can possibly an Odir get invaded by an Elizabeth? Okay. Uh, we, have a, we have a red buff on our Talia, which is amazing. That's a great start for a Talia player. Now, normally when you have this, uh, I would just uh, auto-attack Yasuo to that. Now here... Uh, there was E up, we should have used E faster, way more faster, basically every time Yasuo dashes towards you, we should use E. Now this was a good example of a late E. Now there was 3 seconds, 2 seconds, 1 second, here instant E, instant E when it comes off cooldown, don't wait for it. Don't wait for it at all. Here we also have kill potential on Yasuo because of that, uh, because of that red buff, but we need to be careful to his Qs. Uh, every time he's, uh, he comes close to us with his dashes, just sidestep a little above or a little below your current position in lane. That was a perfect E there. Uh, sidestepping his Qs will allow us to actually get more and more. Uh, that was a good dodge, but that minion could have been uh, killed. Overall good farming though. Now we should throw a little more small Qs whenever possible in auto attacks because we have red buff. We want to abuse that red buff. Uh, this was a bad E because we're low on mana. Uh, we should have kept the E. Now, because we use the E now, Yasuo has a free dash towards us. Now, that's our Yasuo repellent spell early game. And we didn't really have that much mana. Now, I don't know what's going to happen exactly here, but uh, if Yasuo had Ignite or Flash, maybe we would have died in this context. Uh, anyway, uh, this was some... Uh, mana mismanagement here we should uh, be careful more with our mana now here 
don't waste mana with the E, just use it on the, the on the sorry, don't use mana with the W, use it on the E. Now, this would have been a successful gank maybe with a proper E that is towards uh, that it's towards Yasuo. Now, oh, what happened? We jumped a little in time, sorry. Okay, here. Now, E should have been done towards this part of the screen, if you can see my cursor, whenever, where Yasuo is now. Doing a W in this context is an extremely bad mistake, because why? Because you don't have mana to follow up with spells. Maybe a Q, but that wouldn't be enough to kill him. And with an auto attack there, we might have catch. We could have caught catch Yasuo, and that would secure us a kill. Now, that was a free kill that we missed, and... Uh, Currently, I think we missed the cannon as well. That cannons are the most important things you could get in this game. You should never miss them. Uh, also, Elise is lurking around. We gotta, we gotta be careful because she can easily, easily dive us. And apparently she's waiting there. And it's fine. Now, I cannot see the CS. And I cannot see the items, but I do not really mind. I'm gonna skip the recall part. We just... Oh. I see, I see the items there. Now we're behind in CS, we're 10 CS behind, that's the first mistake, because we did not focus enough on our farm, but we did get uh, Vision Word. We did not get the potion, which is very eh against Yasuo, because he can just come at us, and then he might heal from Conqueror, or might have the shield. He has some sort of sustain from his Dorans, we do not have sustain, so that's another mistake. The Vision Word is good, but I would have preferred potions instead of the vision one at this point of the game uh, maybe even boots against that that's why instead of an amplifying tone but it's okay in general now if you don't have a potion you have have to play safer now have to understand that you have to play safer because you don't have the sustain even if you have the runes that are designed for sustain eh, it's not enough especially since we're not playing with biscuits uh, so that's also a thing now we're behind in CS and also we're doing some mistakes on the E, so there we, that's the point where we have to focus. Uh, basically, we don't have to throw spells into the wall, that's important as well. And we have to dodge these cues as well. Uh, most importantly, we have to focus a bit more on farming. Uh, now here, we should have backed off a bit if... Uh, wait, that was interesting. We should have back, backed off a bit if we had E on cooldown, so very important as well. We did not have E here, we stayed too close to the minions, too close to his dashing points. Now this was quite bad W, you might, you might expect him to back off, but he would still have no reason to back off because he's ahead and because he's still far away from the tower. So he was casting Q, it was impossible for him to actually get hit by the W because he was in the Q animation. So we should, when he's casting the Q, we just put it under him. Uh, but yeah, normally he will dash now through this and that's good. We also have Ignite here. So a flash, flash E, Ignite would kill him in this at this point. Flash QE Ignite somewhere along this, these lines, I would normally try to flash it since he now will just uh, recover in HP and we have the problem of not having sustain. So what he did now, he went back, he healed with a potion a bit, he has a potion running and now he jumps on us with full spells. Normally if you cast E right here, Ignite, Q and Flash, you will kill him and probably live, but I really don't know how this is going to play out. Also, yeah, that works too. Uh, and the level up save. <laughs> that was completely accidental, I, I'm sure of it. But it was actually a very good play. Because our Talia survived. And we also killed Yasuo. Now, Yasuo, a good Yasuo here. A very good Yasuo here would simply flash the W. Okay? And we would have not killed him in this context. Why? Because the E was very slow. See, this was the moment you should use E, exactly this one, the first dash, the first dash, not the second one, you just know that he's going to jump on you, you know that, so you have to use the E, and then you cannot rely on your W since you can see on the right side of the screen that he has flash up, if he has flash up and uses it, then what's happening there is that you're going to die, especially since now you're practically dead.
with that ignite there is no way escaping especially we're not having a potion here so we have to consider i'm not having biscuits we're not having time warp tonic we're not having any of these so we're going to die here we're certainly going to die here so uh even flashing this context would be bad because it would be just a waste of summoner spell right level up would not happen because you would not kill if he flashed right here and basically this is a complete misplay from the asso but any I don't know, higher elo maybe Yasuo would know how to flash this because good players against Lia know that they can flash your W for winning the trade basically. But without the W here you would have still killed. Just I'm gonna point you right here. E and Q. Full Q and Ignite. There is mana. There is no need. As we can see here there wasn't even a Q throne. Which is the mistake. But we still killed him because we're not in higher elo where someone will fl uh, flash or outplay you. Uh, probably just um, average Yasuo or the Yasuo that did a misplay there. Uh, but in this context we would have died in, against decent to good Yasuos. Now this is very good this is a very good example actually the outplay was very good anyway for this elo uh, but the example that is good here is that this kind of stuff happens every time at every elo so him not flashing will happen also in diamond one maybe but a good yasuo a good yasuo will generally outplay you in this context or any player in the matter that knows how to use flash will just flash it and we won't hit our w so we have to focus on the immediate damage our q and e and not on our i can say cc generated damage by w and e so that's uh, an important thing to focus on okay we can see here the farm it's also good we now have a bounty on our heads that's a problem because we're going to get focused we do have ignite but from this point we should scale off nicely because of the item advantage still no potions that's another small mistake uh, also here uh yasuo will also dash against us as we can see very late e no alt from yasuo interestingly enough and the bad w okay there are multiple mistakes in this context uh now since he if he ulted there he would have dropped us to well, less than half hp and as we don't have any meaningful sustain we're actually not doing that much uh this was also a mistake with the farm uh okay now here the auto attack should go on the top cs on top side cs not on this one and then the next uh auto attack or small q should go on the one that's the bottom side and then the last one would be killed by the e but the mistake went uh, a bit see some farming discrepancies right there basically when we play a champion with only skill shots we self-sabotage ourselves and this was almost a good w and we could have generated a kill here maybe but he has w so not really but this also could do much more there if he would actually hit q's and alt at the same time when when it's required to do so good farming here use small queues more use small queues more as they are extremely efficient and uh, that's their main purpose to help your farm more okay now there are a lot of moments in which now we can be killed by Yasuo because he has flash up a good Yasuo might dash and flash Q on you which is the hardest maybe Yasuo mechanical skill to do but it's so uh, it's impossible to escape if he does that even if you have flash if he hits Q now and continues with it, he will get a kill and will get the bounty. Even if he dies, he still gets the bounty, so he has the advantage. Uh, okay, farm right here. Okay, but we still can kill him now if we use E properly, but we shouldn't stay near him when he has his full Q like this. If he dashes now twice, he might... Okay, that context might have died. Oops, there's engage. If he dashed now, maybe he would have died to small Q but uh, the next thing is the one that bothers me this, this Q should have not hit and now what's going to happen alt Q and the flash from Talia quite probably okay no flash from Talia because there is no follow up from Yasuo but still okay now we're staying very far for some reason at this point I would have just recalled I would just but buy potion actually a long time ago or refillable since we there was a need for potions every time so uh yeah we did get some gold from other items but look even in this context we don't go to lane with full hp 
and we also don't have potions. I guess so probably suicided there. Uh, there is a again a W that shouldn't be done. Uh, basically, in that context, uh, okay, Ellis could have not jumped to the plant there. There was no way for her to reach the plant, but uh, I think that was the wording here. Uh, also, W should be kept when we are against an Elise, mostly because she can just E away from it or just walk because of the movement speed from her ultimate. But yeah, generally, even if we ult. There was another coming, so we could have just put the W a bit more far away and she would have to E actually towards those creeps. They would have killed her, uh, or we wouldn't, but she would waste flash. In this context, she didn't even flash. No one flashed for the matter, but there would have been possibilities to actually kill her somehow. Now we don't have again potions. So that's a problem, and there are things apparently happening on the map. Uh, but our Talia, since she used her ultimate, she cannot follow in time. Maybe if she had ultimate, we would have kills here. So the using of the ultimate in the context on the mid lane when Jasuo died under tower, I did not understand that flash from Bart. That was a misuse of ultimate as well. Okay, here Yasuo can actually kill us if he feels like it. And I think that's just what happens. Okay, so this is... It's actually very simple for Yasuo to kill a Talia since Talia's W is very hard to use. But we mispositioned here extremely hard since now he can he can dash towards... He, he actually didn't even go through any of the palace besides those two. And he even has a W to play with it. Now the flash should have been done in the moment he casted his alt Q here. This is the point where you need to flash. This is the moment to flash. If he casts his ult, you're gone. Because he has everything. But if he has no ult and that damage, you will certainly survive. Now, even the flash shouldn't be done in a line. should be done a little towards to the side and towards the tower. That would have been a free escape. But in this context, with the ultimate and ignite, super simple kill. So that was the problem. Now I'm gonna skip the unnecessary parts for our context because we're not interested in the game. We're interested in the general Talia uh, player play style. Sorry, not in the player. We're interested in the play style because we don't judge here. We just uh, speak about the mistakes that are being done and how we can improve. Uh, okay. We also see that we have red trinket now. That's a good thing actually, and the vision were there. Uh, now you see that would have been the point where E was uh, needed. And also, normally we should have been dead here again. Because Yasuo being on top of you, without hitting W in most contexts, we would have died here. The fact that he does not use uh, his wall good enough, or he has it on cooldown, that's his mistake because he used it here, but then mispositioned. But normally, Yasuo that would have his uh, wall would have killed us here. Also, we're lucky because our team also teammates also came to help and then this happened, Caitlyn ult, we barely survived, but still this was an outplay from us, but normally this shouldn't happen. Normally this shouldn't happen, okay. Uh, also, this moment here is fairly important, the E again must be done now. This is the point where you use E. This is the moment, so that we have protection against that dash. You can also use Ignite instantly the moment he dashes on you. It, this was the moment, okay, not now. Casting it later just ensured the fact that we'll not, uh, we will not kill him instantly. We would have killed him way faster, but if he had all, we wouldn't. So this is how the fights generally play. More unnecessary fights, maybe there is something interesting, but I really don't want to make an hour video. I could talk for an hour from this video. Also, we got some plates here with the help of Odir. Uh, okay. We're moving around the map. Uh, here was a good moment to actually take the rights. What did I do again? Sorry, I bug this out. Okay, this was a good moment to actually take the rights because Odir can clear his top side. And also, it's a good moment to 
Again, cast our E, excellent. Okay, that was a good dodge. Finally, a good dodge on that Q. And we won the trade very, very, very well. We actually almost killed him at this point. That was another good dodge on the tornado. So we're starting to actually understand how that Yasuo plays. See, you can actually see in real time how this change, how the how we understand how that Yasuo plays and how we can dodge his Q. Normally, you should try to learn that in the first few seconds to minutes of the game when he starts queuing you. Or, well, minutes, not seconds. But yeah, this is just a good time as well to start dodging and to start uh, focusing on the winning side of the matchup. Okay, do not, uh, do not auto attack that. Okay. There was an Odir gank. Now, these ganks are pretty pointless if we cannot catch Yasuo. So that's just mainly a waste of time unless we actually hit the stun of him. Now, there is a setup going on. There is a lot of CS there. And that was a horrendous flash from Yasuo because he should have flashed actually towards the Elise. What's the point of flashing over the wall or not walling the wall here? Because if you wall the Talia wall with Yasuo, you're going to stop that wall from going on. Or is that bro? I don't remember, but maybe it works too. Okay. Now this was actually quite free from their point. If he flashed properly, they would have properly win the 2 versus 2. Now, I don't know exactly how many kills he has out there. Okay, this was a perfect this was a perfect W. And now I'm really curious what's going on. Okay, now why 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 did they run from her? Okay, that Normally Udir should have not run there because he has a shit ton of HP and Yasuo should have not missed that Q. Okay, we should have died. Udir should have killed Yasuo. That's okay. But normally if Yasuo ults first, we lose the 2 versus 2. If uh, Udir ganks first and stuns the Yasuo, we win the 2 versus 2. Normally you'd want to chain your W EQ combo with the Udir stun. His stun and then our W EQ combo. Okay, we can see the farm here, we're a little behind, even though we didn't actually do any roaming on bot lane. We didn't roam at all that much when we had our ult, we just maybe roamed when we didn't have our ult, and that was a mistake, because we lost so much time on CS. Now, the difference in junglers is quite obvious, and we would probably win 2 versus 2 trades in this context. We also did not finish our item, even though we have boots completed. Now I recommend finishing first the boots, the sorry Ludens, and then completing uh, the boots because we just delay our power spike. And Ludens is the main power spike of Talia, and probably the strongest first point of the game for her. And okay, we see more trades and more fights. A lot of trades, and now we are staying here for some reason. I'm not sure what Talia does here at this point, but we can go bot or we don't go bot. Okay. Yeah, going bot it's a good uh, it's a good idea here because of the fight. Uh, also, we don't have our ult, and we stepped into a trap. I don't know what Maokai is doing, just rolling around. But doing this, we actually sacrificed our farm and tower on uh, mid lane. Now. Why is this a bad thing? Even though we killed Yasuo? Because first tower generates way more gold than a simple kill. Now we got a kill here, we got two kills and a tower, that's all, that's good as well, that's a good trade. But normally I would have probably defend that tower uh, and uh, maybe try to kill that Yasuo and then after I push the lane I would have gone bot. But in this context I think it was a good choice. If I stay to think about it, I think it was a pretty good choice for going bot. Now, some overextending here, there is a Yorick that's coming, and we got flash from his cage. Okay, we should kill actually Yorick here. That should be a free kill on Yorick. Okay, Yorick died. And we get kills on mid lane, we get a huge advantage here. Okay, we just run now. That's a good W for escaping, but... Well, we got a kill. But we trade the two, that's not really that good. But we got two towers on mid lane. And possibly, yeah, third one. And I don't know what's happening now here. I'm really not that curious. 
yeah, probably other oh, dead. That's a very big shutdown towards Yasuo, but we still have two Infernals, one Infernal, one Mountain Drake. We still have Tower Advantage. We have two gold, 2k gold advantage. That's quite low for the current Tower uh, difference. I'll presume that they have a lot of farm on top of us. Oh, this is a curious ultimate here. We got a kill there, it's okay, we got to get a double kill, certainly, no, we don't, okay. But we left tower, we left the mid lane tower there, and that Yasuo, normally, normally, Yasuo could have reached you here if he wanted to, probably. Maybe if he just walked towards, a good Yasuo would probably walk towards to stop the following up on that ult. That was a good ult from this point, but they are so bad. The, the asshole play was bad, sorry. And now we follow up, we can actually kill him. Or we don't because Maokai just turned around for some reason. And here we actually step stop for that scuttle, it's okay. Oh my voice. Normally Okay, this is a bad play. Normally we have we should have won from this point, but because we got caught here, they and they can get some advantage, and we're going to waste a little more time, and we're going to prolong the game. Now this was an amazing play from Caitlyn. Uh, that was a horrendous ult. Arbius should certainly get the kill there. Okay, so their bot gets a double kill. Our top lane wins the trade, so it's a three for two, maybe and we got also the tower we're consistently having advantage uh okay that was pointless that flash was pointless okay uh apparently they actually still kill uh sorry they're uh yorick he fought for some reason in this fiesta but i don't uh, understand here at this point of the game why we are not going for our baron we have two uh a secondary infernal now starting up and this could be a bad idea because their elise as you can see on the map is coming and normally you should know that their elise is patting straight towards their infernal and we're not having our jungler here so this is a major mistake that we're doing here because even we're in lower elo or not uh, their jungler will come and i see we did have a word there but if she wants to she can just steal it but she did not want to for some reason Jesus, that at least triggers me. Normally this should have been a lost infernal for us in the context that Udir was at our red buff. And now we have an ult. Uh, okay, we didn't ride, we should have pressed twice, maybe. And they are actually winning this fight, as I can see. Okay. I don't know, Jinx ran away far too fast from that fight. She could have done more. Okay. Now she actually uh, stopped her from coming onto that bush with the W. Now Odir is doing a lot of work here. That was a bad W. Uh, we could have killed here the Bard. Odir is practically soloing the game as far as I can see. And now running towards the whole map. Now this, this shouldn't happen. Okay. Still not dead. <laughs> He's going strong. Look at that chase. This is a beautiful chase. I want to I wanna see it. Are they still chasing? Now he's doing BM. This is live BM. There we go. That was an escape there. And that bard, that bard was straight in thing there. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, trading, uh, trading uh, advantages like that. It's stupid. It's extremely stupid. I should not do it. Odir should have just killed bard and go away, because he just died. And without that good ult from Jinx, he wouldn't kill. He wouldn't have killed Elise, and Elise got again a shutdown. Now finally, we're starting to do it. We're starting to do that Baron, but I don't really like the context of doing or context of doing Baron without my jungler, because we can just we can just fuck it up without a reason. Now, this was an unnecessary fight. This was very unnecessary. Okay, good ult. Extremely good old. We have flash, we have ignite. Just use E and ignite. E and ignite. Both of them work through the wall. Both of them. But we didn't use E and Caitlyn just killed us. And 
we get Baron. I get that. Or do we? We should. Okay, we got Baron. Good. <laughs> Excellent. But our Talia died for no reason with all summoner spells up. That should be illegal to happen. And this fight could be won easily if Shen decided to turn around. I mean, we should actually win very easily this. I don't know why they are not... Look, look at that. Look, look. <laughs> that Jinx could 1 versus 4 there if she wanted to. So there are a lot of unnecessary things happening. Like, yeah, we got Baron, but Talia died for no reason. Yeah, we fought, but Jinx is not aggressive when she should be. And Udyr is basically hard carrying by himself the whole game. Even that Shen is playing way too defensive. And even his farm on Udyr is good. It's like 16 kills. There is a 10 kill difference. The game should be over. But for some reason it goes for... How much? 20 more minutes? About that. And they aren't even at the point where they could scale very hard, just like a Cassidy or so. They aren't having champions that are extremely good for late, like Bard. Bard is not that good for late. Bard can troll your teamfight, or Yorick is good maybe for split pushing. But in a teamfight with a fed Jinx and a fed Udyr and a fed Shen, come on. He cannot do anything. I'm really curious how this game goes for 20 more minutes. All you have to do now is take the mid inhibitor and then siege on bot lane. But probably they were going to fight and someone is going to get caught unnecessarily. Like that Maokai. And this will keep the game going because someone else will get caught now. Just kill him, come on, it's a free kill. And don't leave your Udir alone here because he can 1 versus 2 them. We should have we should have rode that wall actually. See, we win this. We win this very easily. How is this game going for 20 more minutes? How is <laughs> how is this going on? <laughs> there is 13 kill difference, almost 10k gold. Well, not close to that, but... Okay, Odir just hinted there. I understand now why we go along this game. Because Odir has 16 kills and she trolled there. Also, we have a missed W here when the Shen ulted. We could just auto-attack here. Okay, Jinx is gonna get caught and will die. Okay, she still died, yes. And they respawned and we didn't back off. But we still got two inhibs, how do we... How is this game of such a fiesta? We, from this point, it's very, very simple to actually win it. I understand they got that Infernal, that's not, still not enough for them to come back. Okay. This is a good... Uh, it's a good position and they didn't actually see us. If you want to get there, you should use your uh, lens. I don't know. There was no lens used. I'm sure of that. Okay. Uh, but this is a good positioning to actually one-shot someone. Now, Elise will come here, probably. Nah, nah never mind. Bard came. But we still can one-shot Bard. We're, we're far ahead and we have Ignite up. Yeah, that would have been a good, a very good one-shot on that Bard. Okay, and we're going in different bushes, but we're not checking for vision words, for for, for uh, standard words. Look, this is a free kill on Bard. Excellent. Excellent, that's a free kill as I said. And now we have to protect a little that Maokai. Now, how can we, from this point, not win the game? That's what I don't get. This is a free win from this point. Their support is dead, we're 5 versus 4, they don't have 2 inhibitors. And somehow the game still goes for 10 more minutes. This is endgame in most scenarios. Now, I don't understand why we are staying mid here. What's the point of staying mid here? Both Shen and Tulia are staying mid for no reason. Now, this was an ult, but why don't we ride the ult? Because we need to get there faster. Okay, we have three inhibitors and somehow the game is still going. Now, I think I understand why. Because Jinx just went in for no reason and flashed to kill their jungler. And also they got both caught here. That's a good combo from the Bard. But still, even though, even this context, 
if you really wanted to do more here, we could have just revived this salt. Kill someone like Elise in that context. And maybe Jinx wouldn't die here randomly. And with Elise dead and Jinx alive, you actually win this. Because Maokai wouldn't die as well. So we get uh, we get the point here. Now I understand they have no inhibitors, but probably two of them are spawning soon. Exactly. And also we do the Baron here. But their Elise is coming. So what I have to guess here is that she will actually steal it. Because there is no way we get better when the game still goes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> okay, so that was a horrendous smite from our uh, uh, dear probably. Because he didn't... Uh, he didn't play it properly because he has a huge level advantage over that Elise and also because our team probably spammed their abilities at the last time. But, again, here we should win because it's a 5 versus 4. Okay, it's a 5 versus 4. We have most of our... Uh, well, everyone has flash besides Talia and Jinx. And Bart just missed his ult. But the main problem is that Talia will have no mana in this fight at a certain point, which will be... Uh, needed and okay that's a perfect that's a perfect wall from uh, perfect wall from Yasuo but we kinda inted it we kinda inted it because that Yasuo is nowhere near that strong what happened here okay let's see the mistake Shan flash on the bard W from the Yasuo, perfect W, that actually creates a zone in which no one deals damage. Jinx AFK is hitting the inhibitor, that's a colossal mistake. But we don't actually use our W EQ combo. Even if there is a wall, we hit no one with the W EQ combo. And there Caitlyn and Yasuo are actually carrying this up. And we are actually losing at this point. Even though they have no inhibitors, now we have inhibitors, we're actually losing. There was so much inting done there from everyone in our team that actually... Now, time has passed, long enough time has passed so that, that can, uh, Caitlyn starts to actually be useful. What's her score? She has 16 kills and a 700 bounty. Wait, I wanna, I wanna see she's 16. <laughs> Caitlyn is 16-0 <laughs> and she's losing. <laughs> Sorry, this is very funny. Uh, okay. Okay, so not focusing the Caitlyn properly can cost you apparently. So there is an engage now. Why don't we ult here? We're all five here, okay? Why why there is not Leah ult going on? This is a free ult. There Yorick is in base. This is a 5 versus 4. Every time there's a 5 versus 4, odds are you're going to win even if you file everything. Just do a QWE ignite randomly and your team will catch up. Now, probably that uh, Caitlyn would escape because she's apparently a good player. But we just... I don't know, we stayed so much in this game for no reason. It's actually pretty painful. Uh... Especially since we lost a Baron for no reason and we're not engaging when necessary. Now, I don't think we have even a Zonia so that we can engage. But in this context, the Zonia would have been useful to actually catch that. Oh, this is a zone. That's a nice wall. But... And also a nice flank from that Maokai. But I doubt we're actually winning this. I truly doubt. Because we're now way too behind to actually kill that Caitlyn. See? So this team fight, if we don't catch somehow Caitlyn, we're not winning. And they just peel her. They just stay in such manner that they don't we don't catch her. Now they are winning at this point, and if they are careful, we're not having any chances to win this. And uh, we're also quite behind in farm. That's another major mistake. Even though Yasuo is 4 eleven, he's way more useful than us because he has more CS, more level. And 
he will output more damage. He will output much more damage than we will. So being in CS behind, being behind CS actually cost us. And the build, I don't really like it since we have Void stuff. And they have Yasuo and Bard and Caitlyn. All of them having heals. Even Elise has heal. Even your everyone has heal. And we have no loot and no more Lenomicons. Our ADC doesn't have heal reduce as well. Same with Yorick, same, uh, same with Udir, sorry, same with Shen. No one has. So instead of that void stuff, the mistake here is that we didn't go second item uh, Moral Nomicon. And that's a very important part of the game. Because that item would have actually win you the game probably 10, 15 minutes ago. Half HP on heals for that as well means you wouldn't be full HP all the time. Neither Caitlyn, neither Bard, neither anyone else in the team. So that's another major mistake that we've done here. So it's very important to build more Elnomicons when their team comp has heals, has Conquerors, has a Caitlyn with a Bloodthirster and so on, or Yumi or Soraka. There are way too many useful cases here that we need to see. Void stuff also is not that good in this context because most of them didn't buy Magic Resist. We have here an ult. Now I see our Tlia uses mostly ult but never write it. A major part of the ult and utility is that if we ride it we can actually flank their ADC so I recommend going for a bit of riskier plays when we have our Zonia and flash up. So that would be a good context. Now Shen is here. We have a good W here, but for some reason we casted it towards them. We maybe had a potential engage here on their Yasuo, and if we killed that Yasuo we would have won. But I think it's better for the best. I think it's the best that we actually repulsed them there. Now Odir is <laughs> lulling around the map, it's going for that... Uh, uh, he's dead. Is very very dead never mind Jesus guys this is actually a fiesta I absolutely don't understand that Shen ult that's the most wasted Shen ult in history he had teleport for Christ's sake why did you cast ult there it's a major spell for the next team fight now if we'd be smart here we would position ourselves as such that we catch a W eco combo from the vision that we generated. So that's a more important thing that we should do. Okay, for some reason they are starting Baron and Malkai was there. They are not starting Baron, they are chasing us now. And also we did a very bad flash here. So this could cost us actually the game here. This was a good, this was a good actual flash from Bart, but our flash was uh, okay, very very bad. We could have lived there. Now Odir is going strong on the mid lane and does what Odir usually does, breaking doors and <laughs> winning. But I doubt he has time here to actually win the game. Okay. Uh, normally against that bard, okay, that was a horrible flash from Caitlyn. Normally against that bard, you should have flashed the ult only, but we wouldn't have time to do that, so we just flash uh, outside of the ult range in that context, or even when he flashed for us. Now they have Drake here, they have Baron. They would have no reason to lose this because the tide has turned greatly. Also, we have a teleport from Shen. That was so pointless, my eyes hurt. He cannot steal Baron under any context, but for some reason he teleported there. And they got him, because he's probably as tilted as I am watching <laughs> some major mistakes that went on. Uh, multiple people did multiple mistakes there. Even in, uh, as I said, in the builds, in the more Nomicons, and uh, in the numerous fights that we actually threw the game. But in general, we did most things fine, just we just didn't click on two, three things that were s so important that we almost lost the game. Oh, and Jinx here is... No, she has flash up. Never mind. Oh, here there was a point to cast W. Oh, we don't have W, never mind. I'm really curious how this game turns out now. 
because I actually thought we were going to win, but apparently this is not the case that much anymore. Especially since their Caitlyn appears to be smurfing. Has a 17-0 Caitlyn now. I'm gonna skip towards the good parts. Ooh, I get caught here. Oh, that was close. So, Odir is killing their base. And I think he gets the second tower. Meanwhile, how how did we not lose this? I think we lost here. This is endgame. There is no way we're not losing here. With five people against two. Yeah, the game's over. We lost the game here. This this game should have been won a lot of uh, in a lot of moments. And they came back because Caitlyn actually held her ground and uh, did pretty fine. Yeah, I like the smiley face. Okay. Uh, let me go back. So yeah. Uh, there were countless points during this game where we should have actually won. There were countless moments in which we failed. So what went wrong? Well, first the build. We should build uh, Ludens. Sorry. Uh, moral nomicons instead of uh, void stuff because as we can see from their builds it's minute 21 we have started basically our moral nomicons but for some reason we go for void stuff even though this looks like a void stuff build up there they, there's no need uh, flat magic pen is much more better than percent especially when they are not building uh, magic resist heavily they have, there is no one who has magic resist besides yorick at this point and maybe their support, but even him, he doesn't have. So basically, void stuff here is a very bad item. But again, again, even with that tiny mistake, well, it's almost major, we could have won in very many points this game, in very, in much more scenarios than one here, especially, especially this was where we should have won. This was one of the few moments. Okay, just write this salt here. Just uh, ride assault and win the game. Also, I don't know where the Shenault was on that Jinx. Because he has it up apparently right there in the corner. But he chooses to use it on Odir. There was multiple mistakes done from multiple people. Shen should keep just Jinx alive. I don't understand what he did there either. But again, if we ulted here, we would have provided enough uh, HP slash, uh, sorry, damage slash things needed in the fight so with the might have won actually the fight and also again interestingly enough the next fight here this one very important again we should have won this too now Caitlyn flashed okay let me analyze it. the first mistake is that we use so much mana that we don't have any more mana to actually fight the second mistake was the W we should use W with our wall, we have wall up, we have our alt up here, we can just alt and look, Shen flashed, the moment Shen flashed, we could have ulted here, because we need to get in the middle of the team fight and dodge somehow the Yasuo wall, we also have Zonia, and we also don't really care much about of our HP if Jinx needs to survive, we need Caitlyn to focus us or Udir or Shen or Maokai, but not Jinx. And so here, we, if you were in this zone, if you ulted somehow like this, you would have also kicked Yorick out of the fight and we forced him to flash. And maybe hit a W here. Here, This was a W, very W, very free W on Caitlyn. With that W done, she actually probably would have died or get so poked. But the most triggering thing is also the Jinx. We are also part of the mistake here. I don't want to blame uh, also... I, there are mistakes done by the Talia, but there are also mistakes done by the rest of them. There, this is a collective effort to lose the game, it's just not one player's mistake. But again, a lot of things could have been changed. Although, this is the review though, This I think I'll end it here. I really liked the game because this was very... Uh, there was a lot of stuff to learn from it. Because we have to work on farm very much. I tend to do the mistake of stopping, of not farming at some point of the game. But with scores like that, we should have won. 
an ADC cannot carry a game alone, especially in today's meta, especially against the Nodirus 196. And we should actually play more around our team, ulting more. In this context, we could have a right, a right, it wrote. we could have rolled the ult more times. We could have protected Jinx better. We also could have gone for Morello, so that's another mistake. These are some basic things uh, in general, but we can uh, talk much more in depth uh, about this. But that's for another time, I suppose. Uh, I really liked the game because it was extremely useful to learn from it. And I really hope you found it, this review, you found this review useful as well. Again, if you have games and you want me to look over them in text form, so I will not be able to make a video for the every YouTube video that you guys share with me, just post a video on YouTube and link to me, link it to me on Discord by like this, by doing a replay, and I will tell you in text where I think you did wrong, if I have time. So, uh, so yeah, this is the game. I really hope you liked it. And see you next time, guys. Goodbye.